Hi there, my name is Joey and if you're new here, this is my dog Frankie. He's a two-year-old miniature Australian Shepherd, also known as the American Shepherd. Recently, I had to send him to the Emerge. Let me explain. Rain. Our first day out, now it starts to rain. <laughs> it's not our luck, bud. Not our luck. So this all happened over the course of four days. On the first day, we went to a dog park and n just like a normal day. Nothing really happened. We just had a lot of fun at the dog park. When we got back, Frankie ate his dinner and he was completely normal. I stayed here with my girlfriend and her dog, Indy, and they are a good pair and they're a good match. And I was woken up by Frankie throwing up. Over the course of having Frankie, he's always had like this weak stomach. I tried raw, it just didn't suit him. I've tried lots of kibbles, a lot of kibbles don't suit him. I feed him currently a pet kind kibble, which is a green tripe, grain in kibble. There's all so many out there. And then I only add herring oil on top. Why am I telling you this? Because I don't think it's his food. There's a lot of opinions about food out there and that's, hey, that's fair. That's granted, that's, that's okay. Um, just every dog is different and every lifestyle is different and some people can't afford it in certain ways. This is what we use and it works for us. So in the middle of the night, I was woken up from Frankie uh, throwing up and he threw up his entire dinner and it didn't settle well and he threw up uh, three more times that night. Fast forward to the next day, he was doing all fine. Very normal, very average, <laughs> just a normal, normal day. Then that night he slept fine and in the morning at around 6 a.m. I was woken up by Frankie throwing up again. Now this is day two out of four. This is the scary day. At 6 a.m. Frankie threw up. Then about an hour or two later he threw up again and I noticed he was shaking. His body was not really having it. It wasn't in a good spot. He wasn't drinking, he wasn't eating, and he was just feeling awful. It's kind of like when you're sick or you have the flu and you keep throwing up and that gets to the point where there's nothing left in you and you're just throwing up bile. You're just throwing up this yellow guck basically it's like white it's just not good and then frankie threw up one more time and that's what it was it was just this yellow guck it was nothing it was just bile and i thought okay this is it he has nothing left in his stomach this is good let's try to get some water in him to keep him hydrated because his body's dehydrated right now it's depleted he wouldn't drink he tried to go outside and eat some grass he comes in he throws that up right away and then it all went Scary. And it's not like Frankie was like deadly ill, like he needed to go to the Emerge, but I was just scared and that's what you do when your dog could possibly be dying. Nobody knows, it's just what you do. And so I did what I had to do. Now the question is, is how long is it, like is it actually raining? That's what we want to know. A lot of times it just wants to get us wet. See, it's barely raining. Like it's raining right now, but it's gonna be, it's not even, it's barely raining. I understand this is kind of a gross video, but I just wanna make this video because maybe there's somebody out there who's had a scare and maybe they're feeling a little bit guilty. Like, did I do the right thing? Or maybe you're trying to prepare yourself for these scares. Am I gonna do the right thing? And I can honestly tell you that you're never gonna know if it's the right thing. You never will. But if you stick with your gut and you do what you think is right, I think you're gonna be okay. Mainly because you care. There's a lot of people out there who don't care about their dogs. You do. And that sets you apart from the rest. Now the last time that Frankie threw up, it was not good. I noticed that a little blood came up and it wasn't so yellow or gucky anymore. It was this black, brown, reddish throw up and I'm colorblind so I had a hard time telling. So I FaceTimed my dad because my dad had dogs growing up and I just, dads know everything. And he was like, ooh, definitely call the vet right now. That's just not what you wanna hear, but I had to do what I had to do. So I call the vet and they don't answer. And I call again and they don't answer and I email them and they don't answer and then I email them again and they don't answer and I'm freaking out at this point. I'm very, when I say freak out, I'm very calm and collected. Like I wasn't freaking out, 
but you just have that scare in you. Word gets around, my mother finds out, she calls me, and then she's like, hey, what's going on? My mom's a nurse, so she's on her ball, and moms just know everything. I'm calling the vet, trying to get them to answer the phone. She texts me saying, all right, they're gonna call you in a bit, because she just got off the phone with them. Like, the reason why I couldn't get through to them is because she was on the phone with them. <laughs> and so after I got him on the phone, he said, go to the eMERGE. And I wasn't too happy with that, but you gotta do what you gotta do. I trust him. Now, if you follow us before, you know that we went to the Alta Vista Emergency Animal Hospital last year during COVID, and that was awful. We went a total of like four times, and it was six hours each time of waiting, and it was like $900. It was just insane. So we chose not to go there. We chose to go a different one called the Animal Hospital on Lola Street. It's just a Lola Animal Hospital. And immediately, I called them right away, and I'm like, hey, I'm bringing my dog in. This is why. They answered before it could ring. I'm telling you, they were just sitting, they have someone manning the phones like right there, boom. And <laughs> boom. they answered just so quickly and I was so thankful. I'm like, okay, this is gonna be a good experience. So I started driving and of course I hit every damn red light ever. And so I get there and it's COVID. So you have to call when you're there. You can't go in, you can't do anything. You can't get close to the friggin' door. And I call and they answer quickly again and they, they get Frankie in right away. And I'm like, this is so good. This is a good sign. This is amazing. And then they tell me that, okay, you can go home now. We're going to call you so you're not waiting here uh, when the doc sees him. And then we'll give you a call back and tell you what's up. And I was like, okay, that's completely all right. Like Alta Vista, they made me sit in the parking lot and wait and literally call them back and be like, oh, so they were like, why are you here? I'm like, what are you see oh, It was a mess. So I was very thankful for this situation. Two hours goes by and no, nothing. Two more hours go by and nothing. So we're at four hours and at five hours I decided, okay, I'm gonna give them a call. Maybe they forgot about me like the other place. And nope, there was still nothing, no update. Frankie still didn't see a doctor. Then it got to six hours and I was like, what's going on? The biggest scare wasn't him being in the animal hospital. <laughs> It was him being there and not knowing necessarily why. I knew he threw up that black, disgusting bile. I knew all of that, and that's what I knew. And I only went off what I what I've experienced and what I what I know. And I knew that if uh, a dog throws up and it's like clumpy, I know that there's internal bleeding. And it wasn't clumpy; it was just a different color. So my thought was maybe he okay. He's thrown up so much. Maybe he tore his like stomach liner. I'm not a nurse, I'm not a doctor, I don't know. It's just what I thought. And so he was in there and I never got a call. I never found out why and I don't know. And so yeah, that was the hardest part. Just not knowing and why. I got to seven hours and I called again and I was like, hey, like this is getting a little ridiculous. And I was with Angelica and so <laughs> I was getting a little heated. So I just wanted her to call and she called and she got heated as well. And they say that he, they, they fed him some food and they gave him some water and he went outside and he peed and he, he's doing he's doing fine. So we chose the hospital that we chose because we just heard good recommendations about it. We've been to the Alta Vista one, which is in Ottawa, which is the main one that everyone goes to when there's an emergency. And it's just, that was just awful. Like if you followed us on TikTok at the time, we made a video about it. We went there three to four times, I think, and each time was six hours of waiting and him just being there. It was just, it was absolutely awful. So we went to the one on Lola Street and they were so kind. You know, you call them up, you, you ring the telephone and literally without any rings on the telephone, they answered and that's, that's what we want. However, <laughs> they didn't perform very well, but they answered the call, which was nice. At the other animal hospital, we would literally have to like beg and call like four or five times, wait in a queue for like 12 minutes, just to hear that your dog's alive. And it was coming up on nine or 10 hours, I forget which one. And I called and I, we just said, listen, like this is getting ridiculous. Like he's been there for so long. 
has anyone seen him? They're like, no one has seen him yet. The dog has not. They said that there was a car crash, so a dog came in, and that's completely reasonable. That's 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 okay. They also said that Frankie was the dog that was there the longest, and it's just frustrating, right? And so I made the decision. I, I asked, uh, can I just bring him home? Is he okay? Like, can I just bring him home? And, and they said, yes, you can come get him and bring him back in the morning. And I went to pick him up, and he seemed like he was good. When I picked him up from the other animal hospital, he seemed quite tortured. When I picked him up from this animal hospital, he seemed quite relaxed. I asked him how was his overall being in the cage or whatever they have him in and she said he was like one of the calmest dogs they've ever had there. He just sat there patiently, nice, calm, every other dog's barking, Frankie's just sitting there. I'm like, sounds like my boy. And I asked if he threw up at all and, and they said no and he didn't and I brought him home. He slept really, really well that night. No puking, nothing, no randomly needed to go outside to, for diarrhea, nothing like that. And then in the morning, the animal hospital finally called again and they were like, hey, we're ready to put Frankie back in the queue. Do you want to bring him in? And I was like, honestly, no. In the queue? He's still in the queue? He's not even at the top anymore? Because when we called when it was six hours, they said that he was second in line in the queue. And then now, uh, all this time, it's been like 16 hours and he's still in this queue. He's not even up. And I was just like, I just don't feel comfortable bringing him and him sitting in the cage the whole time. It's just not what I wanted to do. And I just trusted my gut. I just trusted everything that I have. And it's it's a tough position to be in because maybe something more serious is happening that I don't know, that my vet doesn't know, that maybe the x-ray can find out because he never got one. He was in there for like 16, he could be in there for 16 hours in the queue. He was there for eight hours and they did nothing. They didn't do anything bad, but they didn't do anything. And, ugh. I just couldn't do it again. And so I didn't bring him back. I, so I went with my gut. I looked him in the eyes. I saw how Frankie was doing and I decided to keep him with me and not go back. And they said, okay, well, if you're gonna do that, you can, we're gonna pull him out of the queue. And if you have to call, he's going back in the queue at the end. And I'm like, you know what? Sure. Right after that, I called my vet and I told him that I don't think it's anything serious. I think that he just disturbed his stomach lining and maybe that's he tore it or something and that's what came up. I don't think he's internally bleeding. It's not chunky. It's not anything. It's not like coffee grinds. And they were like, that's exactly what we're thinking. We're thinking almost like a stomach ulcer. So we want to give him some medication to kind of soothe and then protect it if you're comfortable with that. My vet is amazing. They don't force you into using any medication that you don't want to use or anything like that. And I really, really appreciate that. So I went out there, I got it. And so all in all, I think this cost me around 60 bucks. I picked up his tick and heartworm medication, so I don't know the actual total of the just the medication, but this could have been thousands. The animal hospital didn't even try to charge me, which I'm thankful because I would have fought it because they didn't do anything. They gave him water, water's free. <laughs> we literally recycle water. Fast forward to today, Frankie has had one full day of meals. Today's his second day of having a meal, and my boy's back to normal. He's doing okay. So I wouldn't say he's back to being 100%, but I would say he's back to being like somewhat normal. He ate his dinner last night, his breakfast this morning. He keeps munching on grass and he's on some certain medication. And so he's gonna have his, this will be his first full day of meals and his first day out of the house and able to run and stuff. And yeah, he seems to be doing all right. Crazo is back, eh? Mind you, I think he's having some fiery poops because he keeps rubbing his butt. <laughs> All of you who sent messages on Instagram, if you don't follow us on Instagram, shameless plug, at Frankie to the Moon. The messages that you sent were just amazing and I'm super, super thankful to have all of you looking out for us. I wanted to share this video to hopefully make you guys feel less alone if you're gonna experience this or if you have experienced this in the past, it's like okay to get this little scare. And I'm, I'm really thankful that I had you guys, I had my family, and I also had great vets behind me. And so that's a, that's the, that's our story. I guess we'll see you guys next time for a very healthy and happy vlog. And then that brings us to today where we're in the woods. 
We're just doing it by ourselves. Frankie seems to be very, very good. And it's a little weight lifted off my shoulders. I'm still gonna give him a few more days to kind of get back to things. I'm definitely not gonna take him to the dog park for the rest of the week, just in case if he has something, I just want it to pass. And I don't wanna give it to any other dog. I don't think he has anything. I think he just drank a muddy puddle and upset his stomach and blah, blah, blah. But I'm just taking the precaution that I wish that and I would hope that every other dog owner takes as well. All in all, Frankie's back to being his crazo self. Come on. Whoa. And safe to say that I'm a very, very happy pollerin. My guy's okay. <laughs>